Hey guys, Jay Anthony, welcome back to the channel and a quick little video. So a while back I shot a video about why I think the Rolex vintage market is hugely overinflated and the natural follow-up to that video of course is what do I think about the modern Rolex market? And no shocker here, I think it's massively overinflated, uh, especially when it comes to the stainless steel sports models. I mean, the two-tone ones and the solid gold, they're pretty consistent, but when we're talking about stainless steel sports model, modern Rolex watches, given the current you know scarcity thing that's been going on, the prices are just absolutely ridiculous. Um, we're talking about $20,000 for a brand new Rolex Daytona with a retail price of about $12,000. Uh, I've owned a Rolex Daytona and I bought mine probably four or five years ago at the time for about 8,500 bucks and sold it for roughly about the same shortly thereafter. I had the 4130 movement. It is basically the exact same watch they're selling now new minus a ceramic bezel. And to me that that watch is now a $20,000 watch is just absolutely absurd. And that goes for all the other ones. I mean, I've reviewed the Batman. I'm gonna do a Hulk on this channel at some point. A lot of these modern sports Rolex watches, you know, reviews are on my channel. I've handled these watches. I've owned these watches. The prices are absolutely ridiculous. And so, while I think these watches are wonderful watches and I do like modern Rolexes a lot. If you've been watching me, you know I just bought one. I bought the Rolex Sea Dweller Deep Sea. But the reason that I bought this particular one, the 11 is because this is really the only modern stainless steel Rolex sports watch that I like that I can actually buy for less than the new retail uh, since I bought it used. Because even used modern Rolex sports models are now selling for basically what they were or above in a lot of cases, what they sold for new. And it is just absolutely crazy to me, like I said, that Daytona is a $20,000 watch or that you know the GMT Batman which is a nice watch, absolutely, you know, to me is now a 14, 15, some odd thousand dollar watch. It's gone up more than that in the past. You know, some of the GMTs that came out with the Jubilee bracelets, again, 17, 18 thousand dollar watches. The Hulk is now back down to 14 thousand, and for a while it was 17, 18 thousand dollars. Crazy. Um, I mean, the Hulk, for example, is just a Rolex Submariner with some green coloring to it. Uh, it's a great watch. I've had the experience with them in person. It feels exactly like a Rolex Submariner, which up until a couple years ago was retailing in the eights. Now it's about you know 9,000 retail if you can find one in the current period as I'm taping this video. Uh, at $8,000, $9,000, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a nice watch. It competes well with Omegas and other watches in its price point. And house movement is nicely decorated and finished. Uh, the newer ones have a great power reserve, some great features. You know, the Oyster bracelets and clasp are finally about where they need to be for that price range. Ceramic bezels are beautiful, as I mentioned in previous reviews. I think the ceramic bezels on Rolexes are beautiful, especially when you get into these ones with the platinum, you know, indices on them. They're great watches. Um, but like I said, they compare well to Omega's and other watches in their price point. When you're doubling their price point, you know, to 14, 15, 16, 17 thousand dollars. $20,000, they're no longer competing with watches that they should be competing with. They're not competing with quote unquote hot horology. And at that point, you know, it doesn't make as much sense. Now, are they still going to be, you know, good, reliable Rolexes? Yes. Are they probably going to hold their value better than most watches over time? Absolutely. But if you're going to pay $15,000 for like a Rolex GMT Master Batman or 14, 15, 16 grand for a Submariner Hulk, you're also in the same price range of a used a Royal Oak. And so with that watch, you're getting a whole nother level of finishing. You're getting, you know, a Geneva seal quality movement. You could be looking at some pre-owned Langa. You could be looking at some pre-owned Patek Philippe's. Uh, definitely, you know, a whole nother level of higher end watches. Obviously Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms are in that price range. Uh, but the point is, is at their price point, they're fantastic watches. Rolex makes, they're honestly probably my favorite current watch brand at the price point that they're being built at. The problem is, is again, when these prices get inflated, now you're comparing them to Hot Horology. And with Hot Horology, you know, you're getting an extra level of finishing you're not gonna see with a Rolex. And, you know, I'm one of those people that that may not be a big deal to me. I'm more of an engineering and durability kind of guy. But, you know, when you're talking about the quality and the finishing and the level of attention to detail that goes into these watches, 
as you get into higher price points, you're looking at watches that are absolutely hand finished, that are using premium materials. The, the finishing itself is of a much higher caliber. I mean, if you look at the movements in an, an Odd Mars or you know, some Prion Patex or a Longa, I mean, especially you're getting into German plated silver, you're getting into just incredible scroll work that's done by hand, depending on the model, the dials are another level. The use of precious materials is another level. It just, it does not make sense. And so, you know, as these go up, especially $20,000 for a Rolex Daytona, which is a stainless steel sports watch with, you know, pretty good, chronograph movement at the 4130 is a good movement uh, but it is not on the same level of watches that you'd be paying 20 grand for and so it really comes down to me is what are you getting for your money um, and so this is just my opinion I'm sure I'm gonna offend some people but I'm really curious what you guys think like I said short quick video here uh, but yes like I think Rolex's vintage models are just stupidly overpriced I think modern Rolexes as well are stupidly overpriced this whole scarcity thing um, I think we're going to see potentially with the current situation in Hong Kong and some other things playing out, if we see a lot of sports models hit the market again, I think we're going to see a lot of these prices plummet. And Rolex keeps moving up market and, you know, as someone who owns a lot of Rolexes and has, obviously there's some potential benefits in that for me. But at some point, the quality should probably go up with that increase in price. And at this point, what these watches are selling for versus the quality of what they are, it's not there for me. Um, I think they're better value than some of the vintage watches, like I said in my last video, which I'll link below. You know, 17 million for a Paul Newman Daytona to me is stratospherically stupid. But <laughs> even, again, these modern Rolexes, they're, they're great watches, but they're not two or three X, the equivalent Omega, and they're definitely not on the same par as a Long or an AP or a Patek or even a Vacheron. Um, and even some higher end JLCs, they're, they're just, it's, they're incomparable. Uh, the, the finishing, the attention to detail, and just, it's just, it's just not there. My humble opinion. So all that said, guys, that's just my take. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you think I've totally lost the plot here and I'm an idiot, feel free to let me know down below. I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you guys can see new content as it rolls out. But uh, again, for me, uh, the reason this is the modern Rolex that I bought, the Sea Dweller Deep Sea, is, well, A, because nobody else wears them, which I like, but B, because frankly, it's the only one that I feel that hasn't gotten stupidly expensive. Yes, it's a $10,000 plus watch, but I'm not paying 20 grand for a watch that was originally 12 grand. And so the fact that I can even buy it below retail at this point in time, who knows how this will play out, right, is there's a little bit of value left in it for me. But anyway, Short and sweet. Thank you guys so much. Take care. I'll see you guys real soon on the next video.